Right, hello and welcome to Norland. Uh, it looks like this uh, demo, according to this, will be 20 in game days. And uh, many things still in progress, so they apologise in advance for bugs and things. This kind of. What's it? It talks itself as a bit of a cross between Rimworld and Crusader Kings, is what it's advertising itself as. So it's Rimworld if you had to carry on the name of your noble house. So let's try the tutorial. We'll get started. And as you can see, we've got this map in the background, which is. I'm assuming when we get in game, this will be the map that we're interacting with, and then we've got like our settlement on there as part of it. And our goal is to try and keep our house alive and take as much land and things as possible. There are there is combat, and it will contain like massive armies and so on. So let's see how it looks. Right. Okay, welcome to Norland. You arrive in a small village with the intention of turning it into a thriving capital, uh, into the thriving capital of your future kingdom. Move with WASD. Zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. Pause the game when you need uh, to think and make decisions. Press spacebar or the time control, control buttons in the bottom right corner. Oop. One, two, or three, I'll use these buttons, yep. Oop. 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 Oops, good one. Right. You only control the noble family, so you need to assign a manager to oversee the workers in the buildings. The instructions given by the Lord Manager are, val are valid for three days, but they will try to update them whenever possible. Preferably every day. Let's appoint manager in the hall where the builders are assigned. Select the hall. Hit the management button. And in, uh, and in the bottom left corner, choose a lord for the manager role. Wait for the lord to distribute instructions to the workers. So we'll give Engelbert. Ah, so I've got... Guthrie and Engelbert. Guthrie gives a massive production bonus, and Engelbert gives a slightly small one. So I'm assuming Guthrie is the king, so we should only assign him to the most important tasks. You can assign one lord to multiple buildings, and they will try to visit all of them within a day. So Engelbert should now do something. <laughs> Let's wait. Okay, great. Your workers are now aware of your plans and ready to start building. Wood is the primary resource for construction, so our first priority is to build a lumber mill. Click on the building menu, select resources, choose lumber mill and place it. Great, now let's build a rye field to provide food for everyone. It's best to place the rye field on fertile soil, otherwise it will yield very little harvest. Press the right mouse button to go back to the previous step. In the, con uh, in the construction menu, after selecting the construction site. After selecting the construction site, press the right mouse bu uh, button twice to exit the menu. Wait for the buildings constructed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Ryefield, go! I will say one thing that I that I do appreciate here, compared to like Rimworld and that. Um, as much as these colony simulators, it's nice to have like complete control over oh, build this exactly like this, and it's going to be the size, and you place all the walls in the blueprint mode and that. It's, it's nice to just have a change where I'm basically just sat here just... Um, so it needs workers and a manager, does it? Okay, as workers need instructions, don't forget to assign managers to the new buildings. So, 
uh, yeah, as I was saying, folks, it's nice to just sometimes have one of these colony simulator things where I don't have to, you know, create a blueprint plan for every single block of brick that I need placing down. And I can just go, field, go, lumberjack, go, you know, just place these buildings down and be done with it. It's quite nice. Um, right. So, right, just let the right field and also assign a manager to it. Uh, wait for managers to explain the instructions to the worker. Okay. So Engelbert is going to visit this one, this one, and this one every day. Engelbert, go and tell them that they need to cut trees as lumberjacks. All right, my lord, I'll get to cutting these trees. I am a lumberjack after all. So, yep, you, uh, you should not have needed direction to do that. You really shouldn't have. Right. Once the workers receive their instructions, they'll start their duties. During the day they work, in the evening they attend to personal matters, receiving salaries, purchasing goods and drinking beer. To manage prices and salaries, click on the finance menu. Yay! Here on the right, under daily expenses, you can see the salary given to each worker at the end of the day. Uh, and on the left, the prices and quantity of your goods that you sell to peasants at the local market every evening. One cow consumes one unit of food per day, and to relieve fatigue, they need to drink alcohol every few days. Therefore, to avoid hunger, the amount of food uh, sold should roughly correspond to the population. You can regulate their mood with the quantity and price of the alcohol sold. Currently, the worker's salary is five coins, and the price of flour is seven coins. This means the, work, uh, the workers won't be able to buy food every day. Let's reduce the price of, of flour to four to make it more affordable. Da, da, da. Done. The markets operate in the evening after six o'clock when peasants have free time for shopping and leisure. Click on the button uh, the fa click on the close button, the finance button, or simply right click to close the current menu. Tasks for Lords. In addition to managing building, you can undertake other quests. However, they will refuse to do so if they are unhappy. <clears throat> Seems that one of them is already unhappy, indicated that by the red background on their portrait. Let's see what happened. Oh, Engelbert's mad. It's probably because he's doing all the work. Torturous desire. You upset about an unfulfilled desire. Let's go back to the main tab and fulfill his desire and thus improve his mood. Desire for holy rings. This character feels poor and dreams of owning at least five holy rings. If you hover over Desire, you will see that this Lord dreams of Holy Rings. The rings displayed in the resource list at the top left belong to your king and are in, your in, in, in his inventory. Let's share the Holy, Ring, Holy Rings with this Lord by, by rewarding him. Click on the Action button. Go to the King section. Um, action. King. Reward. Um, okay. Right. Look at the king reward, Tessa. Did I tell Engelbert to reward the king rather than the king to... No, I think I got it right, didn't I? Yeah, his mood's gone up. Okay. 
The effectiveness of completing tasks depends on the Lord's skill level, which can be seen on the third tab of the character menu. To increase the skill level, the Lord needs to be trained. Children gain more XP from training. Let's assign the young heir to training. Click the action, choose training. Um, and select the field of knowledge you want to train in. Wait for the lesson to finish. So it's not training, it's now teach, isn't it? It looks like. In train for Um. Um, rhetoric, I guess. Oh, teach. Oh, we're going to teach him. Okay. Oh, wait. We're going to teach rhetoric, not to Engelbert. Engelbert will teach for her. Let's have Guthrie do it. He's not doing all else. Where's who and what is Frida? Is suffering in captivity and being subjected to, tor to torture. Bandits are demanding a ransom. Well, that's uh, not great. <laughs> when two lords are involved in a task, you'll see the task icon in the menu for both of them. Remember, you can ask them to uh, you can ask them to complete the task immediately. Right, I guess. Oh, that's why nothing's happening. It's not, it's a uh, pause, I guess, because we zoomed out to the map level. Right. But skills are not enough. To build and produce many complex things, knowledge is required. It can be found in books or in the minds of characters. Books, in turn, are housed in the library. Fortunately, we have one. In the knowledge menu, you can assign lords to study and write books. Open the knowledge menu. Assign a lord to study brewing. Uh, Engelbert, you will study beer. So yes, we've got the Great Hall, the individual little houses for the Lords, and then the Peasant Shack. <laughs> the Peasant Shag Shack. Lovely. And our library. <laughs> and not everyone has a bed, it would seem. <laughs> oh, these bunk beds, because there's one underneath them, isn't there? Ah, so it's not only those, and they're all crammed in, there's bunk beds. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent, lovely. Who's this? And why do they look shifty? Got like a bandito mask on. Right, well, we'll probably have to wait until the next day for Engelbert to get off his ass and actually do something. So we'll quickly plow through the night here, get it on triple speed. And any minute now.
There we go. Right. It looks like it's having a line, I guess. There we are. Into the library he goes. And he's reading about beer making. Excellent. In this settlement, the mill has already been built. This building grinds the rye into flour, which the residents buy and uh, to cook food at home. The mill and other production buildings require task assignment. For this, there is a production menu. Flour, do until X. You can place one, a one-time order or request ongoing support to maintain a desired level. Let's order the support for maintaining the quantity of flour at 60 units per day. Click produce until X. And we'll produce 60. The peasants will take rye from the storage on their own. And at the end of the working day, they'll bring the produced flour to the warehouse. Jobs are good. Okay. Oh, Holy Sophia, bandits have stealthily approached our settlement. We must fight back. Fortunately, we have some time before they launch their attack. Army menu. But first, you need to hire warriors. Click the add button. You can recruit warriors from your slaves, granting them freedom, peasants, or hired mercenaries. Mercenaries need one to two days to reach your settlement, but we need an army right now. Right. Fortunately, you have some weapons in stock, so let's free and arm the slaves. They will be grateful uh, to you for their freedom. There are five warriors from among the slaves. We just happen to have five slaves on us. Every unit should be led by a lord. The higher the command skill, the higher the unit's morale will be, and the lower the chances of the soldiers fleeing when taking damage. You also select the warriors who will form uh, the squad and the equipment they will be armed with. On the arm menu, press the squad creation button. Select by select a commanding lord and Engelbert. Yep. By clicking on the warriors in the barracks, move all of them to the squad. Move the second lord into the squad as well. Arm your squad. Finish by clicking on the create button at the bottom of the menu. Okay. We've got weapons, armor, shields, create. Wait for the warriors to retrieve their weapons from the warehouse and be ready for battle. Use spacebar to start and pause the time. Yep, I think we know who got the armor. <laughs> right. Squads under your direct control and can be managed with the right mouse button. You can find its, men uh, its menu in the lower left corner. Um, let's see, select your squad by clicking on its banner, right, right click on the enemy to engage in combat, they are waiting for you to move west of the village. Huzzah! Nearly one and a half grand's worth of equipment, good lord. <laughs> right, stay on squad by yep, don't wait for the results. Okay, go, go, go. He's running away. Get them. Beating him while he's down. 
Right. The bandit has been defeated and their leader is vanquished. The warriors will capture and take uh, as prisoners those who survived and the peasants will bring them to a settlement later. Now is a good time to launch a counter-attack on, uh, on their camp. Oh, don't know why it's over there. Here you can see your settlement and your neighbours, with whom you can interact. Uh, choose attack from the action menu. Set your current squad. Wait for the squad to reach the bandit camp. Squad Engelbert. Well, something should be happening. Squad Engelbert. Have you gone? Well, they've gone somewhere. They no longer appear to be here. Uh, world map. Ah, yes. Here you can see your own and the enemy squad. As well as an approximate balance of power. You can retreat from battle if it seems unwinnable. Play out the battle automatically or personally command your squad in combat. Press the central button to start the battle. Oh, it's like Total War or something, isn't it? Here we go. We've met on the world map, we're going in. Click on your squad's banner to control them. Use right click to move the selected squad. To attack the enemy squad, right click their banner, wait for the battle results. Here we go. How about there? I think we've lost one guy in that uh, in that somewhere. Okay, very nice. Camp of Forest Bandits, attack success, loot. We got 306 quid. And we got some slaves, yay! <laughs> the hostage Frida has been freed and will soon return to your city. Huzzah! Great, you won. In the meantime, let's look at the neighbouring city. It seems to offer a profitable trade deal. Let's send a message there to start your, uh, so that your lords can focus on their work. Click on the neighbouring city to open its menu. On the action menu, select trade. Buy beer. Send a messenger to complete the trade deal. And it requires one paper to do so. Nice. Okay, right. Actions on the map. You can interact with your neighbours in various ways. Some are initially hostile due to a long history of conflict with your suzerain. While you are not very yet very strong, you can use intrigues to weaken them. For example, since your king has a high persuasion skill, you can bribe the neighbouring heir to the throne with holy rings. This will incite a rebellion that significantly weakens the settlement's army. If successful, the new ruler will be friendly towards you. You can personally send someone or use a messenger to carry out the task on behalf of your king. Click the neighbouring city. Uh, click action, choose the air, and bribe. Right. 
possession level 18, possession level attack level 3, absolute loyalty towards our own king, minus tons. 7 holy rings. Can I see my. Ah, so that's my holy rings up there. Okay, I see. So messengers should be sent out soon. There we go. Trade offer. You've successfully developed the money in return for the beer. Relations with Blaine plus five. The trade partner's city budget has increased by the amount of the deal. Ooh. Pretty sizable, isn't it? Nice. I'm liking this. Seems very good. Right. Return to the local map by clicking the world uh, button or using the right click anywhere. Engelbert's back. Uh, sometimes hints related to the current situation will appear here. This can be disabled in the settings menu after a few seconds of the hint being displayed. It becomes frozen and you can hover over the highlighted with words to receive additional hints. Okay, um... You've completed the basic tutorial, you now can explore other features of the game on your own. Hey! Right! And yeah, it looks like you can create your own family here. Very interesting. So, <laughs> lustful, the need for romance desires twice, uh, decreases twice as fast. Uh, this, there's a higher chance of death during childbirth. Beautiful. Increases interest in the character from other characters by 20. Uh, high, higher chance of developing dependencies. Beautiful. Increases interest in the character from other characters by 20. All nervous breakdowns are light. Ah. Oh, and this one. Reason, unhappy childhood. Ah, I see. What's the reason, unhappy childhood? Build a hardcore mode. Uh, difficulty of the game will gradually increase. Uh, so yeah, in normal mode, the difficulty of the game gradually increases. New mechanics are introduced gradually, allowing you to adapt and develop the system to be peaceful. In hardcore, all challenges begin from the first day, requiring high concentration, multitasking, and familiarity with the game. Mm. Interesting. Right, I think that's going to do it for our look. We've got most of the basic mechanics down. Um, I'm going to just turn that down for a second there right so yeah honestly looking good looking very good um just a basic rundown of the tutorial there that we were getting but yeah it looks really interesting i'd be interested i'd be intrigued to see more i'm probably gonna slap it on the uh, the old wish list and that but yeah i think that is i'll be honest it's uh, pleasantly surprised me that it seems to have streamlined a lot of the problems I was worried that it would have. Like when it said, "Ooh, it's like Rimworld," I thought, "Oh God, I'm going to be like forever placing every individual tile and selecting the material to use." But no, it seems to be a bit more focused on the actual, you know, the what's happening between the families and the combat and just a bit of resource management as to the like exact designing and building of your uh, entire sodding base which is for some but 
and I think especially in this context when it's just you know it's kingdom management and that I think it's just nice to be able to just throw the buildings down and then just kind of uh, be able to enjoy the other mechanics outside of that a bit more as a result um, so yeah it's it's definitely getting a thumbs up from my, uh, in my book there for that uh, I'm liking the the whole overworld map thing and again this this idea that because I'll, I'll be honest I think there is definitely 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 a um, there's definitely a market for this type of game where it is kind of Crusader Kings-esque in the idea that you know you're almost playing um like you're almost playing the sims with your noble family and that and managing your empire and so on it's it's quite nice because again i think crusader kings is a great game but the issue is it's, it's just a solid map you know there's nothing it's like oh wow and this big battle's happening there's just two numbers going down <laughs> It's kind of, uh, well, yeah, this is uninteresting. Yeah. <laughs> and you're oh, and you've built this huge city. Oh, wow, we, we can't even begin to tell you how cool this looks, how much stuff there is. Whoa. And it's just the little icon on the map, and it's like development level 10. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Whereas, I think if you could, you know, if you zoomed into the map, and then it opened up an actual... You know, it went into an actual playable space where you were playing as your character moving around or something Skyrim style or something like that. And, you, you know, when you called your units in, like, actual guys were there following you around. And there's been a lot of attempts at this. Uh, Mountain Blade and I think there's even been mods with Total War and even Crusader Kings as well where they would mod something like uh, Mountain Blade. I think I think there are two mods for this actually that I've heard. I think you can literally get Crusader Kings to when you go into a fight, it it will start up Mountain Blade 2 and spawn units in into a skirmish game, which you then fight, and then when it finishes, uh, you go back into Crusader Kings and it closes Mountain Blade 2. <laughs> <laughs> Which sounds brilliant and ridiculous, but uh, I'm, I'm assuming the problem there would be that you'd probably have difficulty with, you know, it might want to play every single one and you'd want an auto resolve possibly, or um, other issues, you know what I mean? I think there's another one where you can get it to, to call up Total War instead. I think it's one of the Total War Rome games or something, but yeah, it's there's some crazy stuff out there with regards to that but i think probably the co closest thing to this sort of game will be something like mountain blade and yeah you've got your character in that but then there's still not the whole like you know families and heirs and stuff that you can see in crusader kings so swings and roundabouts with that one um this is the first game where i think i've seen that it's got pretty much all the features you'd want you can go in you can see your kingdom you can manage your noble family and the settle uh, and the civilians and that your citizenry you can actually do all of that and assign them work and give them different equipment and tools and all this stuff and then interact with neighbors and then every time you go into a fight you actually have the battle and you're moving your guys around you see them actually fight um it's a bit crude Again, the combat is just, you know, right-click enemy and watch them go. Um, you know, it's almost just like watching an auto-resolve. Except instead of numbers, there's actual... It's almost like an auto-battler. But, again, I think just... The way I would see this is Crusader Kings with much better presentation. And I think that's all that is needed. You know, you just need to see the battle, see the actual settlement. It adds so much more of a personal touch to it that you... You know, this is what I've built, and I can see it. So, anyway, I've probably prattled on enough. It's, yeah, I honestly, I think this will be great. I would like to see again, and I think we will eventually get there. Someone will eventually decide, oh, we can make a triple A, you know, ridiculously good-looking game out of this, or maybe, I don't know, 
maybe when Unreal 5 gets a bit more support, people will just start making every game up. Like maybe every indie title will look amazing by then, who knows. We'll see how things go, but I definitely think there's a market for this type of thing. Even though, like I say, it's a bit crude looking and the mechanics are fairly simplistic, just the fact that it's ticking all, kind, all the kind of boxes of what I would expect from this game. But, I think that's very much kind of summed it up. In spite of being, you know, 2D and simple combat and such, the, fe the gameplay features seem brilliant so far. I'm, pro I'm probably going to get this. Right. Anyway, now that I've gushed over it enough. Thank you very much for watching. Um, this has been Norland, which, again, I'm pleasantly surprised at. I was actually umming and iron about whether to include this, because I'm like, eh, RimWorld was alright, but I'd want a bit more of a streamlined experience that doesn't take me 10 hours to just build a shack and get, like, the basics going. So, well, this has definitely pleasantly surprised me. I'm very glad I uh, put this on my list. So, that's Norland. It is available demo apparently until July 10th, so it goes beyond the next fest if you're wanting to give the demo a go yourself I would wholeheartedly recommend it there's a new game here once you've tried the tutorial by all means try the new game you can get 20 days apparently in there before it kicks you out anyway that'll conclude my coverage for it for the Steam Next Fest I definitely keep your eyes out for this one more to come on the channel I'll be covering I think there's I think I'm down to the last demo I think after this we'll have to see Assuming that I'm putting these all out in order of which I've played. Right. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time for that. I'll see you then.